Welcome to The Relay, a podcast from Gulf Relay, where we dive behind the scenes of our operations, teams, and industry. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to The Relay. My name is Sarah Williams, and today I'm joined by Brett Hutchins yet again. He's no stranger to the camera. In fact, he likes it a little bit, I think. Nah. <laughs> well, Brett, I wanted to talk about all the different hats you wear at Gulf Relay, because I know that you're a driver. Mm -hmm. You're an owner operator, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, you also do a little bit of recruiting. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? I do uh, a couple of days a week. I go into the office and I work primarily on um, the driver's performance data. Okay. Uh, we do we pull performance data throughout the company for company drivers and owner operators, and we see how everyone ranks. With uh, we have a ranking system yeah. from the best in the company to the worst in the company. So we see how everybody ranks, and typically what we find out is the ones who are on our board, we have a whiteboard in the office for our top 10 offenders in idling, idling percentage. Right, yeah. And those people, the dispatchers, uh, are supposed to notify, hey, man, what's the problem? You know, why are you idling 80% of the time, 70% of the time? Some of them are legitimate. They do have reasons. And um, after I talk to them and, and if, you know, I dig that out of them, what, what the problem is, they do have some legitimate reasons. Most of them, it's a force of habit and laziness, period. Um, so they, we do that, the performance history. Then we do uh, Omnitrack Analytics. Okay. Analytics tells us all the things that we look for in safety, performance, um, efficiency, that kind of thing. So... One of the first things in analytics we look at is uh, excessive overspeed. Okay. Uh, next thing is harsh braking. Uh, then we look for miles per gallon, uh, average speed, time on cruise control, um, because all this stuff matters. Right, and all and of it plays into miles per gallon. It, it all plays into it. Yeah. And um, it's like I try to explain to these guys, the ones who will listen and actually pay attention, is as an owner-operator, you have two choices on fuel. You can give it to the Bank of Loves or the Bank of Bread. There's no middle land. Right. Um, and, but with company drivers, it's the same thing. You know, you're, you're either going to give it to Loves or the company gets to keep part of it, you right. know, in the profit scheme of things. Um, so we try to, uh, we've been working on this for months now. When, it, when we actually started this, which is about, uh, about September last year. Right. And that was Allie too, right? Yeah. Data analyst, and mm -hmm. she started putting all those yeah, remotes together. Terrific. She she's is. She's terrific. great. Yeah. 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 Um, but when we started this, it was uh, we were idling about 56, 58 percent, and we got it down to 43. Now we're up a little bit now. Some of it there again is legitimate because summertime is kind of coming on us. Uh, all every people are going to running their ACs the, a lot harder. The south, the humidity, we got all that, and and all that comes to a. Uh, play when you're driving and you know what uh, it's like I tell guys we don't want you to sleep hot sleep cold or sleep in the flies we we want you to be comfortable you got to get into good night's sleep our rest is so important to us anyway um but what we see is is guys that uh, pull up and um do their 30 uh and then they're going to go to Arby's but they never cut the truck off and I try to explain to a man if you can if you got the opportunity cut the truck off you, when you crank it back up 45 minutes, an hour and a half later, you can get it cold in there in three minutes' time. Right. You know, just turn everything up to max and roll. So, um, you know, I don't know. We're making making gains with some of them, and some of them we're obviously not. Um, and that's the ones we're watching all the time, yeah. honestly. Um, yeah, it's... Those top 10 offenders. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. We have a top 10 every week. Yeah. And if, if your name's on there week after week after week, you know, it's not good. Right. So... Okay, um, let's talk about the recruiting hat that you wear, because you hire for owner operators. Mm -hmm. But have they pulled you into other recruiting yet? Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll talk to basically anyone they send me a number on. If they say, "Hey, this guy's got a question about uh, the 18-day hold on the check or whatever it is," yeah, doesn't understand or just wants to know in general about owner operating. Or company driving, either, either one. I'll talk to them about all of it. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, the recruiters. 
if they kind of run into a brick wall one or somebody's uh, on the fence but not really sure what they want to do then that's when they get me involved in it right as a driver you can speak to what it's really like yeah i mean yeah. because you know i um they had recruiting ops they have a general idea of what we do but i know exactly they're not what in we it do. every no, day no i mean i sleep in the truck five nights a week so yeah. i know exactly what those guys go through every day i know what they're dealing with on other drivers and stupidity out there and that kind of thing and so um um they have a um there's nothing they can ask me that i that i haven't experienced and there's nothing they can tell me i can't read through the um the bs part of it right so uh we weed through that stuff real quick yeah so talk to me about the quality of drivers like how do you feel the quality of drivers is right now and also how hard is it to get drivers in you know, it's funny you say that because I was just out there talking to that state trooper. Yeah. Now, the state trooper, I was talking to him, I won't mention his name, but he works out in North Mississippi. He's a fine fellow. Um, but anyway. He also used to be a truck driver. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so he drove for quite a few years. So he's seen both sides of it. And based on what you just asked, the quality of driver, he just made that comment that the quality of driver is gone to zero. Yeah. Well, I think that it's you and James and Jason and a couple other guys are the exception, not the rule. You guys want to work. You guys are really excited about it. And you just like, you're go-getters and you have like a positive atmosphere about yourselves. And I don't think that that's the case most of the time. And I think also like we're just people don't know that truck driving can give you a very good livelihood. So people aren't thinking, oh, I'll get into that. And I think that that's also just, there's a smaller pool. So of course the quality is going to be less and less every year. So I don't know how to fight that. I don't know how to like educate more people that like, hey, truck driving is an, a great avenue for people who want to make good money. And also just like, you know, if you don't want to sit in a nine to five desk job, like you don't have to. Yeah, my office view changes every 10 seconds. It's great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I can wake up one morning and be looking out over a beautiful lake, and the next morning I'll be in the Smoky Mountains. Yeah. You know, and so when I open my curtains, I'll go, wow. So, you know, I sat in an office 39 years, so I'm kind of the exception to the truck driving rule. I, most of my life I have been white collar, and, I, and um, just... You know, I've told you before, I felt like my life was on wash, rinse, repeat, yeah. and I needed something different. Um, so that's what got me into it. But what people don't realize, there's so many options in driving. You can be a local guy. You can be a uh, regional, OTR, um, owner-op. I mean, you can do, you can kind of pick and choose how you want to be a, a driver. You, you want to come on weekends. I've got my nephew out there. He stays out 30 days at a time. It's the only way he'd have it. He just loves it. Yeah. I mean, he loves staying out like that. A lot of guys, they want to be home on the weekend. Got got a job for you on that, too. Yeah. So we've got uh, lots of options. And Gulf Relay is great about doing that. Uh, sometimes I think they're a little too great about it. Oh. Yeah, well, sometimes yeah. I think it's, uh, you know, it's like when you... A sacrifice to the company is just operations in order to get yes. what they want. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because... It's a hard balance. Yeah, because... Uh, some people have the discipline to know that if I work four days and carry four or five loads, I'm going to get this amount of money. But my goal is this amount of money. That means I need to stay out five and a half days, but they still want to do the four days. But right. they want the five and a half day money. Right. I'm like, come on, dude. You got to level your yeah, expectations. Yeah, yeah, you got to get that through your head. If right. you want the five and a half day uh, six load money, then you actually have to do that. Right. And um, some of them just don't get that. Uh, well, and it's like you are in an opportunity where you don't, you, you get to set your schedule. Well, yeah. not not totally, but you have For some control part. over your schedule. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? I mean, like, there's so many people who are stuck in nine to five, or really it's eight to five positions, and they have to be there. They have to be logged into a computer every day yeah. at that time, and sometimes weekends, sometimes late, and it's like, Man, truck driving is not a bad gig whenever you get to just really live your life the way you want to and make it work around your schedule. I, I don't be, I don't think that enough people understand how good of an opportunity it yeah. is. The, and like, yes, and there, the, and there's it, their drawbacks. And but they make great money. Yeah. And I just, I need, I think that that's something that as 
all trucking companies need to work on is just going out there and spreading the word that like, hey, this is an option, just like how trades have fallen off. Like there aren't as many plumbers and electricians mm -hmm. and welders and those people make so much more money now they because keep. they're the commodity, the quality, the quantity of people doing those jobs is fewer. So supply and demand shoot up. And so they are able to make really good money. And like, that's what's going to happen with truck driving. Yeah, you get a good trim carpenter now, does? Yeah, it's um, expensive. Yeah. A welder, <laughs> you know, I mean, all those guys. Um, that's the other thing I wanted to talk about is the uh, the the kind of, um, like, you know, I go into the office, so I actually sit with dispatch, the operations people. I yeah. sit with them. I see all the problems that they have every day dealing with drivers, and some of it is... Um, it's uh, self-inflicted. There's okay. no doubt with with drivers. Some of it's self-inflicted, lack of knowledge, uh, the inability to want to get the knowledge that they need to be successful, like learning the um, having a couple of navs options, things like that. Bring their food and water. I talked to a guy yesterday. I told you about that. Uh, he was stuck at at a shipper mm -hmm. and. When he called me, he was running out of hours. And I said, look, you don't have a load. You're running out of hours. You're at the shipper. Do you have food and water? No, don't have either one. I'm like, okay, so you're out four states away, no food, no water, stuck to the shipper, but you're unloaded. I said, why don't you load up in your nap, find you the nearest truck stop, and go get parked. At least you can get food, water, and a bathroom. Yeah. Since you didn't think to bring that with you on your five- or six-day mm -hmm. tour. And uh, it's just stuff like that. It drives me absolutely insane. Am I jacking your mic up? Yeah, a little bit. That's okay. okay. I think, no, you're okay. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> Technical difficulties. Yeah. Um, but you were saying that he didn't take any of his food or no. water out there with you. And it's like we did that episode with those other owner operators mm -hmm. of like all the tools that you bring out with you. And you said that you had your big Yeti and you had a cooler. Yeah. And it's just like, I don't, how, I, okay, education and communication are the biggest things with me yeah. and I think in general is like educating people about like hey like teaching the younger generations you know just smart tricks and then also just general knowledge about how the, the way the world works and how trucking works and everything and then communicating it as effectively as possible and i think that we're trying to do that better and better at golf relay but it's just still a challenge it's a huge challenge ah uh, yeah I look at, you know, some of the people that, not only us, but, you know, out there in the world that we drive with and against and whatever every day. And um, I just shake my head at how unprepared some of them are. Uh, nasty trucks, uh, you know, just things like that. It drives me absolutely crazy. And there again, talking to the trooper a while ago, and he he was, you know, basically uh, parroting. Before I could even say it, he was saying all the things that me and Jason were sitting there talking about. And, uh, you know, he, him as a trooper notices the same thing. So, I don't know, it's a... Uh, well, I feel like people aren't taught critical thinking anymore. They aren't taught to think ahead of time. Well, that's... And I don't know how to fix that. I'm not in charge of the... I'm not in charge of our educational system. Yeah, well, that's... Mm -hmm. Definitely starts there. Well, there in the family, for sure. Yeah. Anyhow. <laughs> I know she want to talk about. I think that's it. Mm -hmm. So we covered dispatch and ops and um, covered all the performance. Let me here. ask you this. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Gulf Relay does a good job of communicating to you guys as drivers about how the market is doing? Oh yeah, Van Zant's all on top of that. Andy Van Zant. Yeah. He's all on top of that. Yeah, he, he keeps us very well informed on that. Um, so yeah, I don't think anybody could accuse Gulf Relay of not keeping them in, in the in the loop on that. Yeah. Okay. He great. does. He he really does. Well, and I know that he like that is just something that he is so good about. He's so good about money. He's so good about like just thinking ahead and planning for you know six months down the line. And I, I'm so glad that we have I think him. All, yeah, I think all the C classes <laughs> probably involved in. <laughs> St staying ahead of the game on that because look, uh, hey, we're out there driving the trucks every day, and I pass by the lots of uh, little trucking companies that are now closed. I pass by. Well, Arnold's just closed down, yeah. and they were a Texas-based trucking company. They were like a pretty large outfit, and they've been around since like the 1980s, yeah. and now they they're under. Well, they're gone. Well, the difference that 
I notice because you know I was a car dealer for years and years is so I'm looking at everybody's lots when I pass car lots, yeah. truck lots, anybody's lot. I'm just interested in inventory. And so a year and a half ago, you could pass by a pier build, bank, any of those places and wouldn't be two trucks on the lot. Now there'd be 50 out there. So there's a lot of people who turn their trucks in because the um, owner operator especially had felt the pinch on the price of freight. We still, you know, have freight and there's, I'm not going to say there's plenty of freight, but there's lots of freight, but the price of the freight is down. So that's kind of what we're waiting on is it to come back up again. Right. Um, so I was talking to Jason yesterday and he said that he had noticed that it was starting to tick up again. It is. Have you experienced oh, yeah. that in the Absolutely. last couple of weeks? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I would say over the last mm -hmm. month, we'll have a uh, two and a half good weeks. It seemed like you just can run, run, run. You've got a load every time you turn around. And then you have four or five days you're like, you know, now what? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And, um, so we, yeah, we've noticed that it's definitely an uptick in, and, and then again, go for it. In the last, uh, probably two weeks, they, uh, recaptured about five of their old contracts. So that's, a yeah. Good thing. Um, Blake's and Cole, I know are kicking, kicking behind with that. Yeah. They were really busy. They were grinding for quite some time Yeah. and they still are. They're really, they are pushing a lot of campaigns right now. Yeah. Yeah, I, when I'm in the office, I see them, you know, constantly on the phone or having a meeting or, yeah. you know, something going on all the time. Yeah. It's really interesting, though, when you're in the office like that, um, and I would suggest to anybody that will listen that every driver is part of the orientation or maybe after they've been out there a month or two or whatever yeah. or been with the company a month or two, that they get pulled in, brought into dispatch and the operations and made to sit. So just sit quietly behind and watch. You don't have to say a word because I guarantee you within about an hour's time, make them stay there all day, but within about an hour's time, they're going to be going, holy crap, these people never stop. I think from 8 to 11 would be great because they start with that 8 a.m. Yeah. meeting every oh, yeah. day and then they like all just go and they hive. Yeah. It's and, crazy. And people, uh, drivers don't understand that when, when they're calling in, you know, my dispatch won't answer the phone. Let me tell you. Your dispatcher's probably got two phones already on. They got three monitors in front of them, a Kindle, uh, their cell phone, and, and then the company phone, and everything's ringing or buzzing all the time on every station you go to. Nobody's sitting around filing their nails, flipping their hair. Well, it's super awkward whenever you're in the middle of a conversation with someone and you realize they were never even talking to you because they've got their headsets in and they were talking to someone else and you were like, oh yeah, hey Justin, yeah, I'll talk to you. And then it's just like, oh, you're not talking. Okay, I'll yes. just go sit over there, I'll mind my business. <laughs> But well, it's really, it's so fascinating to watch and like how all of them know all of their different drivers' names and like mm -hmm. they all know with the different driver personalities. And it's really nice to see relationships form like that. And I know that some drivers just don't really care about that aspect of it. They don't really care to have a relationship with people in the office. But for those that do, I think we do a good job. They of, should. I know. Well, yeah, they want, you want to know your dispatcher because your dispatcher is the one in charge of your, your yeah. time whenever you are working. If I can give a driver any advice, it's this. When you call your dispatch or the shop, um, really, or safety, anybody, you need to already have planned what you want to talk about. Um, they don't want the labor pains. They want the baby, you know, because you got to remember, when you call Henry in the shop, he's got 250, 300 of us out there and probably a hundred of us are going to call him that day. He don't have time for chit chat and, and no. to hear the long version around. He needs to know exactly what the problem is real quick and let him settle it. Um, dispatch the same way. While you're talking to them, they probably have two other lines on hold. So, you know, prepare what you're going to say, say it, um, you know, go, get a quick result and move on. And that's and don't not call to say that nonsense. And there's not to say that you can't call people to chit chat and go freely because like recruiters get phone calls all the time like that where drivers are like I'm on a long stretch I've got to stay awake let's just have a like let's have a conversation yeah they need and to call another driver yeah right they, they do need that to have too. a circle well, of rider guys yeah. you know if you got two or three guys out there you can depend on I, I've got several in my circle we talk all the time I had a guy call me yesterday actually I'm gonna say his name Jimmy King oh yeah <laughs> Jimmy, one of my boys out there and Jimmy called me, in, and it was 7.30 in the morning, and uh, I said, hey, Jimmy, what's up? It, it's kind of early for Jimmy to call. Yeah. You know, we talked, but it's, you know, it was kind of early. 
So I thought, oh, the, you know, he, he was having an issue of some sort. He said, nothing, I just got along rolling, uh, you know, one little company. I said, oh, good. Okay, cool, let's talk. Jimmy so, King is sweet, too. Yeah, we had, a, we had a good long time. He came here to the TDCs with us the first year, and I got a crazy good picture. I'm going to have to splice it in somehow of his beard all like an octopus tentacles just yeah. in the wind. He looks magnificent. It's great. <laughs> we got a little glamour shot. Jimmy the Beard King. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking of the TDCs, we have to go. We got to get breakfast. Yep. So... This has been another episode of The Relay. Uh, Brett Hutchins, thanks again for joining You're me. Welcome. You're always great to have. Uh, and we'll see you next time. Be safe out there.